to just choose violence in the morning. How do you have a life with a puppy? So many accidents in the house, like. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Freya and Bela's channel. My name is Marissa, and I am the dog mom around here. And in my lap, I have Freya, which is my two-year-old Australian Shepherd. And in the crate behind me, I have my four-month-old Golden Retriever puppy that is sleeping because it's absolutely impossible to get anything done when she's awake because I have to be, you know, like glued to her. So we're doing the Q&A for her while she's napping, and I have Freya with me instead. <laughs> Every month on this channel, we will be doing a pup date video to do like a day in the life of my Golden Retriever puppy at every stage. So obviously, her four-month pup date just went up and we're gonna follow up with her four month Q&A. We'll be doing these every single month. So if you like that kind of content, make sure you subscribe down below. I do have all of Freya's pup dates if you ever wanted to go back and watch them if you're new here. And we do Q&As within her pup dates. So today's only gonna be about Bela and her four month pup date Q&A. If you wanna be a part of these, make sure you follow me over on Instagram. I always post on my Instagram stories whenever we're doing them to ask your questions for that month. And that is where I get all of them from. Yes, oh my goodness. There's gonna be no specific order on these questions and answering the ones that are easy and quick to answer in this Q&A video. Sometimes they find really good questions and that's where we'll film a whole video about it because I could go in depth forever. But today is just the quickies and no specific order. The first question is an example. I definitely wanna have a whole video on all of the differences between Freya and Bela or just like my Aussie and my golden retriever. But I will give one because they asked what are some differences in her personality from Freya's. So personality wise, Bela is just just much more chaotic in like a fun puppy way of course. Freya was a ball of energy most definitely. All she did was like run around the house and like herd you and nip you and whatnot. But something about like Bela's energy is absolutely insane. She gets way more zoomies than Freya ever did. And I don't know if it is because she's growing up with another dog so they just like run together and maybe that's why it feels much more chaotic is because there's two of them. But I feel like Bela is just way more energetic, especially right in the morning. If you guys have watched Freya's pup date videos, I'll open that crate and she she just kind of waltzes out, stretches, gets in my lap, cuddles up for a moment, goes potty, and then she goes back into her playpen and takes another nap for an hour. And like, that's how our mornings went, even as four month, three month, five month puppy. Her on the other hand, she comes busting out. Like she is so ready to just choose violence in the morning. That's what we always joke about. And I feel like Freya overall was like a, just a little bit less. <laughs> what was one hard thing like crate training or tricks that you needed to work more on with Bela, but not with Freya? Another like difference one, but Bela still, I don't think has fully grasped the concept of the potty bells. Like she knows that she has to ring them before she goes out, but she hasn't yet grasped that she has to ring them to tell us she needs to go potty. She'll go and sit by the door or sit over there and whine and jump at the door. And that's how she tells us. And then I go over there and I'm like, ring the bells and she'll go ring the bells. But she hasn't yet grasped the concept of ringing them on her own yet. And Freya got it in less than 48 hours. How do you have a life with a puppy? I just adopted adopted a puppy two months ago and don't have one. Obviously having dogs or puppies in general is very hard to do while still maintaining any resemblance of a social life or just life in general, especially at that puppy stage because they need constant supervision. They can't stay in the crate that long. So it is something that I guess I've just come to terms with. So pretty much until they're four months old or five months old, really, I have just kind of been like, my life is going to revolve around the puppy and that's okay. And that's why we're also very strategic whenever I get puppies because my work is typically seasonal in terms of my busy seasons. Outside of this, I have another job. And so the summer is really busy for me. So I love to get puppies in like the spring. So that way by the time summer does come, they are fully trained, fully potty trained. They can stay in the crate a little bit longer and they know all their tricks, those kinds of things. So if you're able to try to be strategic, but also just understand that you probably won't have a life for a little bit. But what does help is having a partner to help you do all of this. So with Bela, Cohen and I are able to switch on and off. Like if he wanted to go have a night with his friends, he can and I can watch the puppy or vice versa. But it is hard to get both of us out of the house. We did go on a date night, I think it was like two weeks or so after getting Bela and we couldn't go until she went up for the night, like at 10 p.m. when it was bedtime for her. We put her in the crate. That's when we like got ready and went to the bar and had drinks together. She says, bye, you're talking too much. <laughs> Do I just let her cry to get used to being alone or do I do something else? Specifically with crate training with both dogs, I did decide to let them like cry it out for that first night or two. It absolutely sucks. It does, it's heartbreaking, 
but I personally think it just kind of makes that whole process go a little bit quicker. I know it's so sad and there's different options. I'm not saying that my way is the right way. You can do whatever feels best for you and your family. But with Freya and Bela, I just let them cry and by like the third night, they were sleeping just fine and Bela's sleeping right behind me just fine. We do other things to positively associate the crate, but in terms of crying, I definitely just don't want to give any attention to the crying or else that will continue because they know I cry, I get out of my crate. So I'm gonna keep crying to get out of my crate or I'm gonna cry and get mom's attention. I'm gonna cry and get a treat, whatever it is that they want. Crying's not the way to get it. And so I don't want to give attention to that behavior because I do not want that behavior repeated. So that is my thought process behind my choice. What is my favorite part of having two dogs? I think definitely watching them just play together. It's the cutest thing in the entire world. And especially like the day I brought Bela home to Freya, like Freya was so excited. It was like she knew that like, oh, this is my little sister. Like it was just adorable. And the fact that they just get to have a little playmate so far has been my favorite thing. They have not entered the cuddle stage yet because Bela's just too energetic. If she's out of the crate, she's playing. She has not like settled herself outside of the crate yet. So she does get put down for naps like right now, but I can't wait to see them just like cuddle up together and just like, I don't know, take a nap. <laughs> Quick answer because again, there will be another video on this, but has she been harder or easier to train than Freya? Harder for sure. How has she been with her puppy nipping? I will say definitely not as bad as Freya because she's a herding dog. She also had the herding nips and the puppy nips. So I was constantly getting bit by Freya. I had to wear fuzzy socks and sweatpants and hoodies and my hair up and no strings. Like I had to puppy proof myself because she was so bitey. Bela on the other hand is definitely nippy or more mouthy and we're working on it. She's not yet fully out of that, but we know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel because she has started like that teething process, losing her puppy teeth and whatnot. So I'm hoping That'll be over soon. I also think that it's not as bad because she does have other dogs to correct that and teach her like how hard to bite and how hard is too hard kind of thing. Like dogs are really good at teaching each other. So she has Freya to kind of like correct her whenever she bites down a little bit too hard. I don't find myself getting nipped nearly as often as Freya. I'll take that as a win. How are you potty training? It did look a little different than Freya in the beginning, but in the end we are bell training her just like we did Freya. And I do have a video on how I bell train the way that it looked a little bit different for Bela was that she came pre potty trained to like a tray and kind of like pellets. If you guys remember, Freya came potty trained kind of the same way, like on a tray with like bedding. And so we had a bag of pellets brought home with us and I bought, which I showed in like my second puppy haul, like a tray to hold pee pads, but I put pellets in it to kind of resemble the smell for her. And we practiced doing that on our like front door entryway because we don't have a balcony, we don't have a porch and it just wasn't working. It was a lot harder because with Freya, we had a balcony and I got one of those turf potties and I highly recommend them. I would have done the same thing if I had a balcony because it was so easy to potty train. We did that because until they are vaccinated, they cannot go where other dogs frequent or like go potty and stuff. But that's the quickest way that they will pick up some sort of virus, illness, whatever. So in this new apartment, without a porch and everything, we were just a little worried about taking her potty outside because there's a ton of dogs in our area. I would assume and hope all of them are vaccinated, but you never know. And so I was like, let's just try the pee pad kind of pellet thing because that's how she was already kind of trained and it just wasn't working. Like she was having so many accidents in the house. Like Bela's probably peed in our house like 30 times or more. <laughs> So potty training definitely took a lot longer with Bela. And like I said, she still hasn't fully grasped the bells concept. She does tell us when she needs to go potty now, which is great, but I'm still just trying to like get the bells together. Cause sometimes if I'm in the back room, I want to hear her. I'm not here to watch the door to see if she's sitting there. And that's the whole point of the bells. So we're getting there, but potty training with the pee pads, I just didn't like, she was pottying all in the house, just taking her right outside the front door to try to use this pad in our entryway didn't work. So we just said, screw it. And we were taking her outside to the grass to go potty. And then we would wipe her paws before she came in. So that way if she she did step in anything. She wasn't gonna lick it and get sick. And that worked like a charm. Like as soon as we started doing that, I swear potty training happened like this. Like she just wasn't grasping it with like the pee pads and everything. As soon as she was outside and could pee in grass, the accident started to diminish. She still had a few cause she was still just like grasping it, but it happened a lot quicker once we just took her outside to go potty. What kind of socialization are you guys doing? You did it so well with Freya. Thank you so much. So basically the same thing. I do have a whole video as well on like what to socialize your puppy with. I will link that video down below. And there's like little graphics and whatnot that just like list a whole bunch of things that you should expose your puppy to because socialization is just exposure. It's not playing with dogs, meeting dogs, meeting people, saying hi, getting pets, playing. Like that's not socialization. Socialization is just exposure. So that way the dogs are used to 
new things and they will behave around new environments and new stimulus and all the things. So there's a little mindset shift that you have to think of and it's not like socialization like we know it as in like, I'm gonna like go to happy hour and socialize with my friends, that's not it. So I have a list of things that you can socialize your puppy with or just things that you should bring your puppy around to expose them to at a young age. And that's the same thing that we're doing with Bela. Another thing that I'm doing the same with Bela that I did with Freya that worked so well and highly recommend is doing your activity of the day is what I always called it, but it's basically the socialization activity of the day. So every day until Freya was like six months old, we went on an activity of the day. So for at least an hour, but up to like three or so, I would go and take her to one of those things on the list to expose her and we would just practice being in the presence of this new stimulus. And I would positively associate and give her treats and just practice checking in and whatnot. So we would take her to ponds, we would take her around construction sites, take her around other animals, if you can get them around horses, whatever. And we're just doing the same thing with Bela. How do you work on preventing resource guarding between all the dogs? This was definitely one of my worries bringing, obviously just a new puppy into the house in general, because Freya has been an only child for two years. And so I was like, I wonder if Freya will welcome a new puppy into the house. Will she share her toys? Will she share her beds, her bones? Like, how is this gonna go? And thankfully, I haven't really done anything to train it. They have been really good at it. Like Freya will be chewing a bone and Bela will just chew the other end of it, or they'll switch bones, they play with the same toys, Bela will sleep in her bed, not like with her, but like they have been so good about sharing. However, the one thing that I am just very much aware of is with food, especially with Freya. Freya is very, very food motivated, if you guys know that. So we do feed the dog separately, more so to just mitigate that. And that's only with meals. We do give them treats together, like we have practiced that, but we slowly introduce that. Like we didn't just the first day start giving each other food and bones and whatnot. For the first like week or two, we had all the bones up. Like nobody could play with bones. I just tried it with toys first and they did really well. And then after like two weeks, we introduced bones. And then after like two weeks after that is when we started to do treats. We would give treats separately, like away from each other. Cohen would give one and I would give one to the other dogs. And then we would practice doing it together. And I would try to give them at the same time. So that way Freya knew that like she wasn't a threat to her treat. Like they're both getting a treat. And now I can give one and the other. So we kind of like just slowly introduced it. But thankfully we haven't had to really train anything with like true resource guarding. That can definitely get really hectic and can go downhill really fast. So if you are dealing with something like that, I would highly recommend looking into like professional training as soon as possible if you do sense some like aggression with your dogs. Best advice for someone who wants a golden. As of right now, what I can say is whatever you think you need to do for puppy proofing your space, do it times 10. You can't have a single speck of anything within like reach of a golden. Shoes need to be in a closet away. Like a shoe rack is not, not gonna cut it. If you have things folded up on shelves, they're getting pulled down. Even if it's on the counter, once they get bigger, it's getting pulled down. Like that is another little difference between Freya and Vela. Freya was so good with not chewing things up. Like I gave her a bone and she knew her toys and her bone and she didn't chew anything that she wasn't supposed to. Bela has chewed our walls. She is just much more like grabby and it's definitely a breed thing. So just be prepared to 100%. Don't have anything you love on the ground. <laughs> what is the best thing about owning a golden retriever? Again, so far I have just loved how soft she is. So just pretty. And obviously so is Freya, but just like having a different breed, like I'm so obviously used to Aussies now and I love Aussies. It's just different and I absolutely love it. But her spunk and her personality and her energy is crazy. It's so cute. Her loyalty as well, even right now at like a young age is so adorable. Like I think it's just that golden retriever personality. The breed personality is something that I'm loving so far. It's so different from Aussies. Like Freya is such a working dog and Bela's is just so like, I'm here for a good time. And and I love that. I wanted to touch on this because this is definitely the direction I want that video to go of the differences between the two. It'll be somewhat fun, but specifically the training is what is interesting to me. And most definitely, I think Bela learns a little bit differently and the way that I approach Bela with certain things is different than how I approached it with Freya. And I'm gonna talk about that in that video. So be on the lookout. Has she been off leash? And how do you trust her to be if so? She has been off leash at Cohen's parents' house. They have many, many, many acres and she did so good. She stayed stayed by the bus, she stayed with us, and she stayed by the other dogs and just wanted to play and lay down and have a good time. Definitely still gonna train it a lot. I'm not just assuming that we're there yet. So in terms of trusting her to do so, I don't trust her to be off leash in populated areas or if other dogs are around. Cause we definitely haven't worked on that and we definitely haven't trained that. I think she did really good off leash cause it was just us in a big plot of land with nobody around and not a lot of distractions. Like she was able to just kind of run and come back. So that's a different thing. And that's the only way that she's been off leash so far. So we do 
need to work on that more. How big will she get? Average golden retrievers, at least like for females, they can be up to like 65 pounds. She could be 55, 60, 65. That's kind of what we're expecting. So she will be a big girl. Freya's only 45. That's your typical healthy weight zone for an Aussie, a female Aussie at least. So she will be bigger than Freya, which is kind of crazy because Freya's already like a medium dog, but like a big dog, you know? Bela versus puppy Freya. Who do you think would win in a trick command contest? Freya hands down. Share what her schedule is like. Getting a pup soon and would love to know the schedule. So I already posted her three month kind of like puppy schedule video. I didn't do a three month pup date, just what her normal schedule would look like. So depending on what age your puppy's gonna be, I would watch that video. And then in her four month actual pup dates, so not this Q&A video, I talked about what her schedule is currently, which is basically still the three month pup date. And that's what we've been following. That's the same thing that I followed for Freya when she was a puppy and it worked amazing for me. Obviously everybody's a little bit different, but as it changes, which it does, and I I purposefully change it as she gets older. I will update you on future pup dates and whatnot. Am I going to take Bela to an event with me? If you guys know my other job, I do a lot of outdoors events and I would take Freya with me last year to all of them because she could come. And Bela will definitely be coming to some of them. I probably won't be able to take both to an event because it is a lot for one person to handle two large dogs and work because that's what I'm there to do. But I plan to like switch on and off with them. So like take Freya to some, take Bela to some and whatnot. She's been with me to one event so far, but it was an inside event at a store and everybody loved her because she's a puppy still obviously so I've taken her there and that's been her event so far We're gonna end it on this question because I'm actually really excited someone asked this Have I enjoyed having a puppy the second time or did I enjoy it more the first time and this isn't bad in any way But this is just the honest truth I 100% have enjoyed having Bela way more as a puppy than Freya Even though I've said that Bela has been a lot harder in some ways Both of them have been harder in others and they're different But the whole puppy stage in general has been much more enjoyable this go around than the first time and and I think that's due to like three reasons. One, I already know what to expect. This is my second puppy. So I have a lot of knowledge behind me. I know what's going on and I know how to handle it a little bit better. Two, I have helped this go around. So Cohen is just as much a part of all of this as me. He's just not so much on this channel. He's on my personal channel. If you guys want to like follow that one. He is so, so, so involved with Bela and the raising of Bela and the training of Bela and everything. So I'm not doing it by myself, which makes it 10 times easier. And three, I have consciously made the decision to kind Kind of go into it with a different mindset because with Freya I was much more strict I actually got a DM about this because I was like showing something that Bela was doing I forget and someone commented on my Instagram story and was like you were so strict with Freya and now look at Bela ha 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 like that's always what happens with the second kids and second dogs and stuff usually your firstborn is a lot more by the book and you're much more strict with them and that definitely has happened and I've seen it but I did just want to enjoy the puppy stage this time because to be honest as much as I love Freya and I wouldn't say that it was so much because of Freya just because of everything else her puppy stage was hard the puppy blues was a lot like it consumed me and every day I thought I regretted it and I questioned why I made this decision and whatnot but we pushed through and we are at two years old and she's such an amazing little doggo so I'm so happy that we made it through all of that but her puppy stage was really really hard for me and I didn't want it to go that way again all I felt was like stress and love but like just stress <laughs> so with Bela I have purposefully been like I'm going to enjoy the puppy stage I'm going to laugh when she chews something up. I'm going to just you know, let her be a puppy and enjoy the puppy snuggles and all the cuteness while I can because she's only going to be that small for so long and not worry so much about like we need to train eight hours a day and like stick to her schedule to a T and be so strict as I was with Freya. I will say a side point to that though, with Freya's breed, it was really helpful for her to have that structure. Like working dogs and Australian shepherds thrive on routine and structure and having a job to do and the training and all of that. So she very much enjoyed all of that. I just don't think that that's the same thing for a golden retriever. It just hasn't worked that way. And I've been okay with that. I've just been letting the puppy stage happen. We still train every day, but it's just not as rigorous <laughs> as what Freya went through. So it's been different, but in a good way. I will end it on that they are only small for so long. And I wish I could go back to Freya's puppy stage because I just wasn't having a good time personally with it. Again, I love Freya and I loved taking care of her every day and training her and watching her be so smart and grow. And like all of that was amazing, but it was stressful. 
and I just wish I could go back and like enjoy her puppy stage. Don't take your puppies for granted. They're only gonna be small for so long. So just give them all the cuddles and give them all the treatos and do some training and whatnot. But dogs have bad days too and they're gonna chew something up. So I hope you enjoyed Bela's four month Q&A while she is still napping, thank goodness. If you like these kinds of videos and you wanna stick around every month for her pup dating Q&A, make sure you subscribe down below. You can follow me over on Instagram if you want to submit questions for the next go around. And I will see you guys next week with another dog vlog. Bye.